Um, so we're in, we're in this new calendar year, and something that, you know, the, the general, like, generic, oh, like, new year, new me thing that, like, we just, like, love to, like, say people post on, like, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, um, and that's a time that generally people make resolutions. Uh, not to, like, put anyone on blast. I'm curious, though. I feel like it's more of an adult thing. How many of you guys, like, make resolutions over New Year's? Some of you? I respect that. I, I wish I had that kind of, like, discipline or motivation when I was in high school. I didn't. I was like, I don't even know what date it is. I'm not paying attention to anything. Props to you. I'm not, I'm not shaming you. But the truth is, shh, listen up, guys. The truth is, we all know that many, many, many people at the beginning of the year make some, like, decision, some commitment about how they're going to grow and change and be different and have this, like, new persona for the next year, and it very rarely materializes. It's not often that we see someone really walk out those commitments that they made. And I will say this, though. Whether or not you make resolutions, uh, I hope that as you guys are coming here to church, to the mission on Sundays, your small group, I hope that you guys are encountering God. I hope that you are learning his word, and I hope that you're regularly being taught and corrected and directed, and that every time we leave, we have some conscious decision about ways that we're going to change and grow moving forward. That should be like a regular thing that we as Christians do. I hope that's happening. But we all know that it's not that easy because every single one of us, if we could make a decision to be different, to act different, to have different habits maybe. We wish that there were some things that we did more of, some things that we did less of. But a lot of us know, as much as I might wish that I was a certain way or did certain things, that isn't often our reality. Because at any point, we could name some things that like we wish were different and they just aren't. And, and I want to talk about why that is. I want to talk about why very few people see their resolutions out. And it, it matters whether or not you made res resolutions for this year. It matters because this truth is true for every person who wants to get to know God. And the truth is this, is that change of actions require a change of perspective. I can't ever hope to change how I am acting, thinking, what I'm doing, how I'm being without some change in my perspective. That's always true. A lot of us have had the experience of going to a camp or going to Future Quest and having some strong desire or motivation to do some things differently. I prayed with some of you guys for, who made those decisions, and we know that it can be easy to feel that way, to have that motivation or that desire. You can leave youth group pumped up like, yeah, you know, this week and from now on I'm going to do X, Y, Z, and... It doesn't happen because a change of actions, it's not just motivation that we need. We need a change of perspective. I was uh, hanging out with my dad the other day, and he just happened to be watching my 600-pound life. Uh, I don't know if you guys ever watched it. I don't recommend it, um, but it's a show about people who weigh at least 600 pounds or more. Um, and so we're sitting in front of the TV eating pizza, ironically, judging these people and their unhealthy life choices. Um, and... So we're eating pizza watching the show about this, um, this woman who, like, got surgery. She was, like, 1,000 pounds, got down to 500 pounds, and then the documentary is, like, a few months go by, and then she's back up to 1,000 pounds again. Uh, and I'm, again, sitting there eating my pizza, like, judging, like, what are you doing with your life? And, uh, but it's interesting. One of the things that that I noted in watching this show as like all the like experts and doctors are telling her, it's not enough that you had surgery. It's not enough that you're motivated enough to take some drastic action. Nothing in your life is going to change unless you start changing the way that you're thinking. Um, and so they like everyone that I've seen on the show, they refer to like psychologists and to like behavioral specialists to help them adjust the way that they think about their life, their eating habits, because with no discipline, 
even these secular doctors know you're just going to go back to whatever is easiest and whatever's comfortable. And I was like, that's all of us. That's me in my life and you guys in your life that just a desire to change our actions doesn't really mean anything without a change of perspective. There's a, a term that I heard once, and I think about this all the time for myself, working in youth ministry, I, I you know, think about it a lot, and it's the idea of having a saved mind versus a saved heart. Now, a saved heart is this recognition of who God is, Jesus, forgive me for my sins, like I need you. But a saved mind is a different thing. A saved mind is my thinking, rather than just my heart desiring Jesus, my thinking is now, is now mirroring his. I'm adjusting the way that I think and, and perceive things to be like his perspective. And that's a different thing. And, and I'll say this, in youth ministry, I see a lot more saved hearts than I do saved minds. And I just want to be the first to admit, from my own experience, I know that it can be hard to walk with both. In high school, it was this long process of me realizing, like, I wanted the right things. I knew that Jesus was Lord. I knew that he died for my sins. I desired to follow him and to be obedient. To, I, I wanted to live the life that he d intended for me to, but my mind did not line up with those feelings that I had. My mind was not saved. My heart was. So my thinking was very worldly. My, my thinking was, how do I just get the most fun for myself? How do I get popularity and praise? And so my thinking was, that is very important. Even though my heart wanted some different things, and what I found is, as long as I thought that way, my actions would inevitably come back to what I actually thought. And a lot of us, we could say a lot of things. If I asked you guys for like, tell me some right answers of how we should live, all you guys could give me all the right answers. But when you leave this room, you're going to live out what you actually think. The perception that you have, what your mind is actually focused on, you're going to live that out, Whether even if you know that it's not right. If my mind doesn't line up with my heart, then there's going to be conflict. And I bring that up because it's not just true at the beginning of the year. Every single day in our life as a Christian, this is true. And I wanted to share about it because as, as someone who cares about you guys as a youth pastor, this grieves me all the time. Um, I'm, I am not active on social media, but there's a lot of people, especially old students, some of you guys, who I keep up with through social media forms. Um, and it's kind of our only like connection sometimes years later. Um, so I have a lot of them, even though I like rarely post stuff and whatever. But I, you know, will check it and see what people are up to. And every, almost every time I'm on it, it just like, it grieves me. Because I'm very reserved on social media. I'm not like liking a bunch of stuff. But I see the things that regularly pop up on my phone, um, on Instagram, on Facebook, which I used to keep up with all of like your parents and everyone else, uh, on Snapchat, whatever, all the things that pop up. And I'm not even on, I'm not on TikTok. I have zero desire to do that uh, to myself. And I have self-respect and I'm an adult. So, but, but I know there's, I know there's even more there. And the things that pop up, I'm just like, I look at them like, that's stupid. Like, I can't believe that this is there. But also it makes me sad because I know all my students are seeing this, and I don't know that they have discernment to recognize what a lie this is or what a trap these things that I'm seeing are. And it's everywhere. We can't help it. You're surrounded by it. The, the enemy is doing everything he can to keep us from seeing clearly because he knows if our mind is renewed, if, if my mind is saved, my mind is focused on Jesus and becoming like him, my actions are going to follow, and I'm going to be a lot more like Jesus. And I'm not going to be stumbling in all the same stuff that I used to. So he surrounds us all around our culture with lies and traps. It grieves me every single time I turn on Netflix. It's I'm bombarded by 
what are very clearly like lies intended to make me think a different way than God would have me think. And I can't watch a single show now ever without there being someone who ends up changing gender, someone who uh, is heterosexual who ends up then being homosexual. I can't watch any show without, if it's a teenager, for sure they're like sleeping around doing drugs. Uh, otherwise, it wouldn't exist. If there's any Christian ever in any like secular TV show, they're an idiot or they're like a weirdo, like they're in a cult and you don't want to, you don't want to like them or have anything to do with them. It's very clear. It's very obvious. And so every time I see it, it's like, all right, I see what they're trying to do here. But sometimes we don't. And we're surrounded by that everywhere we go. John 3, 3, Jesus said, truly I say to you, unless one, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So I need God's help. God has to open my eyes to see and realize his kingdom, to see and realize eternity, who he is, to make a decision to follow him. I actually need God to help me do that. And a lot of us have, and that's great. But Jesus also differentiates. Later on, he talks about entering the kingdom. It's, it's one thing to see the kingdom, to know that it exists. And I think most of you are here because you have some, some knowledge uh, or someone brought you. I'm glad you're here. And I want to tell you the kingdom of God exists. But it's not enough to just see and know that it's there. Jesus explains it has to be entered. My entrance and in the kingdom of God requires action on my part, submission to Jesus and pursuit of him. It doesn't matter if we know the right answers. And for you, my, my church kids, uh, I envy you in some respect because I didn't grow up in church and I think, man, you have such a leg up on so many people because you, you know the word of God. Some of you guys have godly parents who have taught you the word of God your whole life. Um, and you might have grown up here at Foothills. But also, I, I'm nervous for you because sometimes we think that we, because we know all the right answers, because we see it, we think we're good. And that's a deadly trap to fall into because that's not the same thing as entering. Romans 12, 2 says, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that by testing, you can discern what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. What it's saying is your mind should be being transformed to be more like Jesus so that you can see clearly, so you understand life and the world and how it works. Because if that's not happening, you're going to be blind. You're going to be lost. This truth that I'm talking about, seeing clearly, it applies to, honestly, any single message I ever give, like, this is a, a reality of it. That's why so often, and we, like, kind of make jokes about it, like, one of the answers to any question, any sermon is always going to be the Bible. Like, why? Because it's pertinent to any truth that I could ever talk about when I talk about the Word of God. And it's true for this. If, I, if you want to live your life knowing Jesus, becoming like him, growing in the ways that you desire to grow, whether it's because of resolution or just obedience to God, it requires you to see clearly, and you can't do it without his Word. You cannot possibly hope at all to have godly perspective or wisdom or discernment to walk in the way that God calls you to without knowing his word for yourself. You can't. And if you have made it to this point in your life by just like the scraps that other people drop of the word of God for you, um, like that's cool. That's God's grace for you, but it is not going to be enough for you moving forward. You have to get to know the word of God for yourself in your own life. And I'm glad you guys are here. I hope that is a, a sign that you are wanting to do that. But if you don't, if we don't, then we're going to live in compromise. We're going to be unfulfilled, ineffective. We're going to fall short of the things that God invites us into. And, and that's why it's so important that you realize that what you feed yourself affects how you see things. What you are taking in, what you're watching, what you're listening to, what you're surrounding yourself with, who you're surrounding yourself with, all of those things affect, do you see clearly what's in front of you? Do you have godly perspective or not? Are you blind or lost? If so, you are never going to find your way to the things that God's calling you to. You, it just won't happen. 
you have to think about what am I feeding myself? Again, it's a bummer that like every single thing I watch now has some very clear agenda. Anything that like pops up on my phone uh, is like so obviously wanting to numb me to God's truth or wanting me to believe lies about myself or the culture or sexuality or God. So if, if we are, and I am, so I know you are, if we are surrounded by lies, if we are surrounded by clear untruths that are not going to help me get to where God wants me to be, I don't have a choice. I'm just fed that all day. If I walk outside, if I drive down the street, if I turn on my TV, I'm, I'm surrounded by it. I can't escape it. So if that is happening to all of us constantly, then we have to actively do something to counteract that. I have all these things trying to help me not see clearly, then I need to pay attention to the things that are going to give me clear perspective. Proverbs 14, 12, it says, there's a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way to death. Yeah, you can just try to figure it out, and a lot of us do. We, we like to like, well, this sounds good, so I'll take some of this. Yeah, I feel kind of weird about that, so I'm going to leave that out. Uh, this sounds good, and again, a lot of this is like fed to us through social media, maybe our friends, um, maybe have some opinionated relatives on a variety of topics. But what happens is we just decide what sounds right. What feels good? And what happens is the end is the way to, its end is the way to death. That's not going to lead me to God. That's not going to lead me forward. And we like to, we like to think it does. It kind of makes us feel good about ourselves. And what's, what's sad is like in the world we live, the people who are just deciding what they think is right and good are like celebrated and cheered for. You know, they're the, the blue check mark Twitter accounts that like everybody is seeing because that's what's popular. Just whatever you think like sounds good, just just do you, whatever makes you happy, you know, whatever. But its end is the way to death. It's not gonna possibly lead me to God. It's not gonna lead me to the life that God's inviting me into. But again, I can't I can't trust my own motivations and opinions and feelings. I know that. I know that because they change every single day. So do yours. And so if I want to see clearly and navigate moving forward, and again, the, the ways that I want to grow, I can't do unless I'm seeing clearly. My mind has to be being renewed and transformed because I can't trust it otherwise. It's not enough to have seen it one time. Uh, I need a, a volunteer up here, preferably a trustworthy one. Some of you guys who think yourselves trustworthy, I'm like, oh, man. Um, Jared, will you come up here? I just want everyone over in this section to know, if you had your hand raised, I think Jared is more trustworthy than you. So I'm just, that's, it's a reality. All right, Jared, come over, come over here. Sorry, Kelly Godzilla at uh, Mike Cones over here. I'm going to uh, tie this around your face, and I need you to verify, this is where the trust part comes in, that you actually can't see anything, okay? Right, sure. Real quick, look down, you see, see the cones? Yeah. Cool. Can you see? Nope. All right. Uh, can you see? No, I still can't see. It's all red. Good. Um, all right, I'm going to move you this way. Jared, I want you, yeah. with the sight that I just gave you of the cones in front of you, I want you to navigate over to me without, without touching a single cone. If you do, I'll give you $100. All right. You start again. I feel like you're going to fall off the stage doing that.
You got to go faster. You got to go faster. Jared, thank you. Yeah, you actually had taken a couple before that. Um, you're good. I really just wanted to see if you were going to jump off the stage. You can sit down. Oh, I'm sorry. I don't have $100. I had zero intention. I knew you had no chance. Um, <laughs> when you're comfortable, they have zero chance. You can make promises like that. It could have been $1,000. Um, although you guys helping him made me a tiny bit nervous. But here's, here's the thing. Yeah, maybe. Here's the thing. He, he saw it for a second. And then I covered his eyes and he couldn't see anymore. And the fact that he had seen it before that didn't serve him well after. He had these obstacles in front of him. And this is a tiny, dumb cone that, that means nothing. But as far as living life, God says that it's only, it's only through him that we can see clearly. The obstacles, the pitfalls in front of us, the, the snares and traps, the, the things that lead to destruction and judgment and draw us away from God, which, so we have a lot more at stake in front of us than did your foot touch an orange cone? Yet we live our lives like, I'll just feel it out. I'll just, everyone else is just moving forward, figuring it out. Like, I'm fine. Not realizing that, just like I mentioned in Proverbs 14, 12, the way that seems right to a man, its end is the way of death. And again, I can't trust my own thoughts and opinions and feelings. And so in this road of life in front of me, when I'm navigating teenage life, I'm navigating my identity, I'm navigating sexuality, eventually I'm going to be navigating marriage and a career and, and a life with God I can't trust how I feel because the stakes are so much higher. Because to make a mistake might be something that costs me dearly. And again, to, to invite judgment, to invite consequences in my life. Isaiah 55, 8 through 9, God says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, my thoughts higher than your thoughts. God's like, look, I, I made this life in front of you. I know how to navigate it. I see it in areas that you cannot possibly see. The ways that I want to direct you are ways that you would never come up with on your own. But it's going to lead you to life. It's going to lead you to blessing. It's going to take you exactly where your heart desires to go and where I'm calling you to. But he's like, it's not your ways, and it's not your thoughts. So there's an element of, as I'm navigating my life, do I trust that God's thoughts and his ways are, are more reliable than my own, or my friends, or what I'm hearing elsewhere? Like, it, like for Jared, it's not enough that you saw clearly one time. It's not enough that you came to youth group or went to a camp, and then, you know, God opened your eyes. Every day of my life, I need to be looking at him God, show me. Show me where I'm going. Show me what I'm doing because I don't want to take any steps without you. I don't want to try to figure this out on my own. And so part of that is looking to his word. God, teach me. Teach me about life. Teach me about how you want me to act. Teach me about how I should talk. Teach me about how I should dress. Teach me about the things that I should be okay watching or not watching, listening or not listening to. So many of us, we don't change our actions. We don't, we don't live the life that God invites us into because our minds are, are somewhere totally different. Like Jared being blindfolded, we're just trusting everyone else who can't see clearly to show us the way, which, like, of course is foolish. If I set someone else blindfolded next to Jared to navigate him, it would be idiotic. There would be no point. Literally, the blind leading the blind. Yet we live our lives just like that. Colossians 3, 2, it says, Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on the earth. The whole idea is like, no, it's not, it's not like a New Year 
new me. It's not just, oh yeah, you know, I'm, I'm really motivated to, to make some changes. I need God's help. If I have any hope of growing to be like him, it's, it seems dumb that I would think I could do that without him. But a lot of us, me included, we live like that. We live like, yeah, God, no, that's cool. I got it from here, though. Like, I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll navigate my way. And we don't look to him. We don't ask him for answers. We don't look to the, the help and the authorities he's brought into our life to guide us. We're like, nope, we got it. The only way you're going to have changed actions is from a changed perspective. And we need God's help for that. We can't do that without his word. And, and some of us, I was thinking about as we, were, as we were worshiping, like, man, for some of us, it's probably been a while. It's probably been a while since we've been in the presence of God, since we've intentionally tried to put our minds on him, to worship him. It's just a reality in the room of this many people. And it, it's sad. It doesn't need to be that way, but I, I know that it is. But we have no hope of growth or change if we, if we aren't willing to give God our attention, to put energy into trying to get to know him and pursue him. And so wherever you're at, if you have some desire in you to get to know God, to grow, if there are things that you know you want to pursue, things you know you want to leave behind, you need him. We need his help, his guidance. We need his word. We need his spirit. And uh, in the next month or so, we're actually going to have a series about some of those areas that we tend to not see clearly in. And there's a lot of them, but I want to focus on that moving forward because you guys are, are navigating blindly or trusting someone else who sees nothing to guide you. I want to invite the band up here. I don't know, I don't know what desires you guys have. I believe that there's a good amount of you guys that have some desire for more of the Lord, who, who want what he invites you into. But you can't, you can't do it on your own. You can't do it just figuring it out. You can't do it just coming to the mission once a week or camp, you know, once or twice a year. You need to be having your mind renewed and God teaching you and showing you and leading you. And, and what I would like is I'd like us as a group to commit to pursuing that. Not just on Tuesdays. Yeah, let's do that together in, in the way that we worship together the way that we engage in the word of God together. Um, you guys have been doing a good job tonight. But as we go into worship, like, let's take advantage of this time to see him, to have him help us see clearly. But also when you leave here and the way you live your life, again, the stuff that you are feeding yourself is gonna change your perspective. And it's either gonna help you to see things more clearly the way God intended, or it's gonna blind you more and more and more to the, the reality of God in front of you. So as we worship, I invite you guys to pray and think about, God, what, what changes do I need to make? What does it look like to adjust my perspective? Are there some things I need to be feeding myself that I'm not? Are there some wrong things that I need to remove from my life? Because you cannot expect to move forward unless you have a change of perspective. You can't, it's hopeless. So pray about that as we begin to worship. I'm going to pray as we, as we start, but invite God to show you what that means for you. Right now, Holy Spirit, thank you that you are our helper. You are the truth. You show us the way forward. As we worship, God, I pray that you bring conviction and revelation to understand who you are, to understand that we can't do this life without you. We desperately need you. Show us, God, how we pursue that change in perspective to allow you to shape the way we see things. Speak to us as we worship you, Lord, in your name. Amen.